welcome to Cine Monica. Hello guys, welcome back. I want to talk about everything that I watched in January, every single movie and TV show. And I might sneak some December ones too. You know what? You'll never know that they're from December unless you follow me on Letterboxd, but... Of course, let me know what you have been watching this January. Maybe I'll watch it for my February video. Like I said, I'm gonna start with some things that I watched in December. There's just some movies I haven't talked about on my channel that I want to discuss and hear your opinions on them too. So the first one is The Whale by Darren Aronofsky. As you guys all know, it stars Brendan Fraser and Hong Chow and also Sadie Sink. It's about this man who is obese and he is practically dying. So one thing that he wants to do before he dies is kind of fix his relationship with his daughter. They don't really talk, they don't really have a relationship at all. His daughter is Sadie Sink. She's a very troubled teenager. She's basically making it really hard for them to get along. She doesn't really want anything to do with him. It was a heartbreaking movie, I'm not gonna lie. I must say, I found it a little bit slow. I could tell that this used to be a play. The dialogue sometimes wasn't very natural in my opinion, but I absolutely loved Brandon Fraser's performance and also Hong Chow's performance. I think both of them were incredible and both of them are nominated for an Academy Award, which is amazing. Another movie I watched in December was Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which I absolutely love. This is why I love animation. I love stop motion, especially from filmmakers like Guillermo del Toro who really, really understand that animation is a medium and not a genre. He always says that. This movie was pretty much his style. Character designs were amazing. I loved the cricket. Everything thing about this movie was so magical. Another movie I watched in December was RRR. Very action-packed and fast and a huge spectacle. The music, amazing, incredible, it was nominated for an Oscar. I loved it. Could not take it out of my head. Avatar The Way of the Water. The story just didn't blow me away. I didn't find it very entertaining. I feel like it was way too long. I did like the scenes with the whales. Those were nice. But overall, it was a very generic story for me. Okay, now we're moving Moving on to January. The very first movie that I watched in January was White Noise, Noah Baumbach's latest movie which stars Greta Gerwig and Adam Driver. The movie was weird, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I need to re-watch it to fully appreciate it because I kind of didn't <laughs> appreciate it that much. I feel like it was kind of forgettable. Um, I just thought it was a little bit too maybe pretentious. I don't want to say pretentious because I feel like if I maybe give it another watch, maybe I'll appreciate it more. But right now, only having watched it one time, I feel like it's just kind of forgettable a little bit too messy and all over the place but i did like the ending the choreography yeah i don't know if you have a different opinion please let me know i would love to read it moving on i rewatched ratatouille because why not one of the greatest pixar movies that there has ever been i will never cook as good as remy and that is okay then I rewatched Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the one with Gene Wilder, which I absolutely love. The scene where he sings, A world of your imagination. That scene gives me so much comfort. It is so sweet. It almost makes me want to cry, just the innocence. It just reminds me of when I was a kid. And I rented it for the first time because I saw a bunch of candy on the cover back when you could rent movies like physically. That movie just brings me a lot of innocence and pureness. I was thinking like, there's there's so many horrible people in that movie so the fact that it just brings me a lot of happiness is kind of it's, it is what it is. Then I watched After Sun, which I talked about in my best movies of 2022 video. Um, I believe it was my number four in the best movies of 2022. But to be honest, I actually rewatched it and I feel like I want to bump it up to my number one of 2022. There's just no words to describe how raw that movie is, how much emotion it, br it brought out of me. I was crying uncontrollably and it's just really sweet and very real. I think it's my number one of 2022 now. Then I rewatched The Menu, which if you guys watch my latest video, I already said everything that I need to say about The Menu. Two big thumbs up. I love that movie. I think it's really, really fun. Then I rewatched La La Land, one of the greatest movies of the 2010s. I truly believe that La La Land is a perfect film. I don't care what anyone says. Everything about it, the style, the music, the songs, the cinematography is beautiful, the, it just feels magical. It's honestly Damien Chazelle's masterpiece. Even though I'm a huge fan of Whiplash, this is like the film of his career, I feel like. 
I mean, he's still young. He obviously can make a lot of other great movies. I still haven't watched Babylon, by the way. <laughs> then I watched Rear Window for the very first time by Alfred Hitchcock. It was super fun. I watched it on the plane. Two things about this movie. All of her outfits were perfection. I was in awe. She looked so good. And number two, this man had a cast on his leg. He had a broken leg, right? She sat on his cast so many times and he didn't even flinch. I was like, first of all, who sits on someone's cast? In second, why aren't you reacting? Um, other than that, it's a great, great movie. I really like how how creative it is because it's only basically one location, his apartment. And then we look into other people's apartments from their window. Yeah, super creative. I really liked it. Then as it is tradition with me and plane rides, I usually just watch comfort movies if I'm feeling kind of anxious and stuff like that. Usually on planes, it happens to me. So yeah, I watch Legally Blonde and I watch Mean Girls. They didn't have a moment out on this flight but I did rewatch Ferris Bueller's Day Off which I hadn't rewatched after watching Succession I, I kind of saw Cameron Fry with a different mindset now then I watched Puss in Boots for the very first time I hadn't watched it ever it was super funny I'm surprised I never actually watched it but I think I was just I don't know I don't know what I was doing in 2011 if you haven't watched the Puss in Boots movies I really recommend them especially if you're a fan of oh, Especially if you're a fan of Shrek. Then I watched The Banshees of Inna Sharon. I do think that this is generally one of the best movies of 2022. I mean, it was nominated for an Oscar. It won a bunch of Golden Globes as well. Because it truly deserves it, I think. is very unique. It's very weird as well. <laughs> Somehow, it's also very deep and funny. Colin Farrell, he's supposed to be this guy who has this friend. His friend doesn't want to talk to him anymore. So he creates this boundary. He doesn't want to talk to Colin Farrell's character. And if he does talk to him, he's gonna cut up his fingers one by one. It was truly entertaining and pretty funny. It's, it's like subtly funny. It's also extremely sad. There's something that happens in this movie that it's just heartbreaking. I, I'm not gonna obviously say any spoilers, but no, there's a couple things that are very, very, very sad in this movie. Everybody did a fantastic job. I think every single person in this movie got nominated. Maybe not, I don't know. Then I watched Shotgun Wedding, which is JLo's new wedding movie. Um, I was actually invited to the premiere, so I watched it along with JLo in the audience and every other actor from the movie. Jennifer Coolidge was there, which was amazing. I was super excited to see her. She was, of course, super funny in the movie. I feel like she obviously gets typecasted now, but it truly suits her and she does a fantastic job every single time and I will eat it up every single time. This movie I was actually super excited to see because it was filmed in the Dominican Republic and not only that, but my cousin is in the movie and I actually filmed her a little bit in the theater even though, I mean, I know you're not supposed to like bring your phone out, but I did it sneakily, okay? Nobody saw me, <laughs> I hope. Um, the movie itself, I actually found it very fun. It's a thing that JLo does a lot of wedding movies, but this one I actually found it to be the, the most fun JLo movie. It's not really a rom-com, I would say it's like an action comedy. They're like running around in the jungle, throwing grenades, shooting people, I don't know. It was very action-packed and it was actually pretty funny, like I laughed out loud. And now I don't know if that's the effect of watching it, not only in the theater, but during the premiere with the actors there, like everybody was being very rowdy in the crowd, so maybe that added to my experience. I, I don't know, I think it was actually pretty fun. Then I watched Elvis. <laughs> I actually had not seen Elvis yet. I really don't know why. Well, the right moment came, I watched it, and <laughs> to be honest, it felt a lot like a huge montage or like a trailer, kind of, like a super trailer type of movie. It just moved way too fast sometimes. I'm very cutty and montage -y and like, it didn't really feel like a movie to me. With that said, I did like Austin Butler's performance. I know that he practiced that Elvis accent for a long, long time, so much that now he's stuck with it. To be honest, it did pay off because I do think he did a fantastic job. So I just wasn't a huge fan of the movie itself. Like I said, it felt way too fast and cutty for the first like two hours. And then the last hour was the complete opposite, just really boring 
boring, slow, not very entertaining at all. I must say, I did enjoy some parts of it. It was kind of entertaining sometimes, but overall, I wouldn't really watch it again, to be honest. Then the last movie I watched in January was Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I think we have a winner for best animated feature because this movie was incredible. It was not only extremely fun, it was also super deep. I cried at the end. I mean, what's new? I always cry. How this movie dealt with Puss in Boots fear of death, his fear of mortality. They did it in such a unique way. God, I don't want to give out spoilers. The wolf character, he was very terrifying visually and all of his scenes, you could really feel Puss in Boots fear of him. I love his relationship with Kitty. I absolutely love them. I think they really complement each other really, really well. And then the addition of Perrito. I absolutely loved him. He was so cute. At first, I was afraid he was going to be annoying, kind of like an Olaf. But to be honest, he was actually super cute and I love him and I would die for him. Also, if you have already seen it, I'm not gonna give spoilers, but the ending was very exciting. I left the theater with tears on my face, but a huge smile on my face as well. So yeah, I think they did such a great job. Oh, and also the animation. The animation was so different because it, it was like a traditional 3D animation, but then everything kind of heightened and like the colors heightened, the saturation heightened and the animation style changed. It really reminded me of the Spider-Verse animation style. Huge fan of Puss in Boots. I I need to watch it in Spanish now though because I know that this movie is gonna be like 10 times better in Spanish probably. All right, now I'm gonna talk about the TV shows because I also watched a couple of really great TV shows. First being The Makanai, Cooking for the Michael House. This TV show was directed by Kore Eda who is a big Japanese director. He has done movies like Shoplifters, which is amazing. He also did the new movie Broker, which I haven't seen, but I really am dying to see it. But anyways, this show was directed by him. And this is, I kid you not, the most wholesome, cute, comforting show that I have seen in a long, long time. This is the vibe that I get from watching slice of life anime. In this case, it's two girls who want to become geishas or maiko and they move into this maiko house where they basically train girls to become geisha. So they are best friends and they love each other. During their apprenticeship, I guess, they both discover kind of what it is that they truly want to do, their passions, while really supporting each other, wanting the best for each other. Other. And it's just seriously so so sweet. I have never seen a Swedish show. The cinematography is also really soft and beautiful. If you want to watch something that is 100% positive and adorable and that is just going to make you feel so good, then I definitely recommend this show. It's called The Makanai. I haven't really seen a lot of people talking about it, which is a shame. I haven't really seen Netflix promoting it either. So here I am doing that. Please go watch it. Then I watched Severance for the first time. I actually binged it in like three days because it was that good. I mean, <laughs> right away I was captivated by it. It's so mysterious, so thrilling. It's like a mesh between Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Black Mirror. It's about this company where the employees that are working there, they have to go through this procedure referred to as severance, which means that whenever they go into the workspace, they basically forget everything about their lives so that they can be 100% focused on their job without any other distractions. And then when they go out of their work and into their their life, they don't know anything about their other self that is working in the company. So basically, it's like a way to separate life and work. It's pretty fucked up. <laughs> of course, there's a lot of weird things happening and they start to realize that this company is not as innocent as they claim to be. To be completely honest, I had not seen a season finale that was so intense as the season finale of Severance. It was so thrilling. I was literally sweating with my mouth open open like this the entire time. It was so good. I could not be more excited for season two. I mean, that's how you do a finale. It was amazing. And then another show that I actually started watching yesterday is that 90s show, which is of course the remake or the follow-up, I guess of that 70s show. I used to love that 70s show. So far, I'm only like four episodes in, so it's not like I have watched a lot. I'm enjoying it. Also, it has come to my attention that the girl that plays Eric's daughter, she could literally be my sister. Like, I see her and I see myself. She could be my little sister. We look so alike. It kind of freaks me out when I watch the show. I'm like, that's me. <laughs> what the heck? Guys, 
Please tell me I'm not crazy. I feel like this girl could be my sister. Okay, that's all that I watched in January and a little bit of December. Please let me know what you guys watched in January and also your opinion on any of the movies or shows that I talked about. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.